Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Dr. Asanta Jayavardhana, Senior Lecturer from Rajarata uh, Medical Faculty Department of Anatomy. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about the genetic basis and uh, diagnosis of alpha and beta thalassemia. Uh, so, uh, uh, thalassemia is the most uh, it's the commonest genetic disorder in Sri Lanka, and it is one of the most studied genetic condition throughout the world because in certain populations, the alpha and beta both alpha and beta thalassemia are uh, uh, prevalent. Uh, uh, right. So these are the uh, objectives for today's presentations. Uh, basically, uh, we concerned about uh, educating about the genetic basis of alpha and beta thalassemias uh, and the common uh, mutations that present in Sri Lanka and explain why certain uh, thalassemic conditions are not present in Sri Lanka. And also, uh, we would like to help you to uh, uh, educate you to select a suitable genetic diagnostic strategies for uh, thalassemia. Right. So I will discuss with the uh, two cases, right? Simple cases. First one is a, six, a four and a half year old girl presented uh, with low hemoglobin. Uh, she was born to non-consanguineous uh, parents, and hematological studies uh, shows. Uh, low hemoglobin and hypochromic microcytic anemia. So, her serum ferritin level was also normal, not within normal range, and quantification of uh, hemoglobins revealed increased amount of uh, HbA2, second, uh, the adult type 2 hemoglobins. Uh, usually, it uh, uh, Fall below 3.5, if it is above 3.5, it is significant. And so this indicates uh, she may be a carry of uh, uh, beta thalassemia. So, genetic studies uh, by sequencing, uh, thank sequencing revealed uh, she is heterozygous for one of the commonest mutations causing uh, beta thalassemia in Sri Lanka. So, she has one normal gene and one affected gene. Uh, therefore, uh, amount of beta chains produced uh, is less. Next one, the second case, again a similar case, a young boy born to non consanguineous family, presented incidentally found to have low hemoglobin. Again, hemoglobin was marginally low and he has a hypochromic microcytic anemia, hypochromic microcytic anemia and Serum ferritin was also within normal range. And interestingly, the HPLC or the hemoglobin quantification is normal. The HPA2 level is only 2.9. So this is how uh, uh, alpha thalassemia trait is presented, usually presented. Okay. Uh, the gap PCR studies for common alpha thalassemia mutations revealed is homozygous for alpha 3.7 deletion, which is the commonest uh, divisional mutation in Sri Lanka causing alpha thalassemia. I will explain it more in a minute. Okay. So before we move on to the, further into the genetic basis, we should have some idea about how these hemoglobin genes are uh, uh, located within the, our genome. So we have two clusters of hemoglobin genes, the globin genes, the alpha globins, beta globins, gamma and delta. There are different types of globins. They are uh, located in two clusters. The first one is in the chromosome 11, where the beta, uh, gamma and delta uh, globin genes are located. So the second cluster is in chromosome 16, where the both alpha 1, alpha 2 and several other types of uh, globin genes are located. Right. So, during uh, early development, uh, humans develop different types of hemoglobins, not only the hemoglobin A, A2, or hemoglobin F, which is also known as the fetal hemoglobin. There are several other hemoglobins, hemoglobin uh, GAVA1, GAVA2, or and like that, but those are not that important. And during fetal life, most of the uh, 
function of the hemoglobin is carried out by fetal hemoglobin and usually the amount of hemoglobin fetal hemoglobin reduces towards the term and it become insignificant after first year of life within first 6 months of postnatal life the adult type hemoglobin uh, gradually takes up the duty of carrying oxygen right so this is the time where the beta thalassemia major is manifested because uh, there's no effective uh, production of beta uh, beta genes beta globins that results in no hemoglobin a is produced right so other things we have to remember not only these globin genes within this cluster close to this cluster there are some regulatory genes are also located for the cluster on chromosome 11 there are uh, several regulatory genes located in the upstream you can see here so uh, these are known as uh, so beta lcr genes and they similarly for the the cluster on chromosome 6 there is one regulatory element that is also located in upstream so these genes are oriented uh, in same manner all globin genes from 5 prime n at this end to the 3 prime, 3 prime end to the to this end right so other thing we have to remember is so to uh, develop normal hemoglobin chain hemoglobin molecules there should be a matching of two types of hemoglobins the ratio of two types of hemoglobin should be ideal should be one to one right so uh, when we take the hemoglobin A, it is made of two uh, alpha and two beta chains. Hemoglobin A2, uh, two alpha and uh, two delta chains. Hemoglobin fetal hemoglobin is made of two alpha chains and two gamma chains. So you may wonder how this happens, especially when we take the hemoglobin A, there are two alpha genes uh, and there's one beta gene. So ratio of alpha to beta is two to one. Right. When you take all genes in both chromosomes, we have four functioning alpha genes and two functioning beta genes. So it can be explained by the relative uh, rate of translation of these uh, genes. So the, a beta gene is translated more efficiently than alpha genes. And as a result of that, at the end, there's a one-to-one -one ratio of alpha to beta chains. Therefore, if there is an imbalance between the amount of this alpha and beta uh, globins, so that results in precipitation of this excessive type within the red cell precursors. That leads to uh, uh, ineffective erythropoiesis. That's the basis of uh, how this anemia occurs in the thalassemia. Okay, so so this is a picture taken from a database up-to-date database on uh, different uh, entries of regarding mutations affecting uh, globin genes. Okay. Uh, so there are uh, 1,800 different entries and up, out of that, about 506 are thalassemic entries. So those are the ones that were thalassemic. And there are 1,354 types of uh, other hemoglobin variant entries and you can see there are 51 types of uh, entries where this can give rise to something uh, mixed picture like uh, thalassemia plus like other uh, hemoglobinopathies those are known as thalassemic hemoglobinopathies so what is the uh, uh, definition of thalassemia and hemoglobinopathies that is uh, you have to know right if any mutation leads to production of structurally abnormal hemoglobin it is known as a hemoglobinopathy when there is a altered hemoglobin protein output altered level of synthesis of hemoglobin they can give rise to thalassemia right <clears throat> when there is a mutation that causes both altered rate of synthesis plus structural abnormality they can give rise to thalassemic hemoglobinopathies. So this is the simple definition of hemoglobinopathies and thalassemia. Right. So thalassemia, there are many types of thalassemia, but uh, the most significant types are 
the alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. Other than that, there are several other types. Uh, we, discuss, we can discuss them later, but today I will limit my uh, presentation to alpha and beta thalassemia. Right? When you take alpha thalassemia, there are four types, the silent version, the thalassemic trait, HB, H disease, and HB bar hydrox fetalis. And beta thalassemia, we usually divide into thalassemic trait to thal minor, thalassemia intermedia, and beta thalassemia major. So under other types, there may be uh, gamma beta thalassemia, epsilon gamma delta beta thalassemia, and hereditary persistent fetal hemoglobin, which is also considered as a other type of thalassemia. So I will tell you something about this hereditary persistent fetal hemoglobin. This is uh, occur when uh, the normal, the more than normal amount of fetal hemoglobin persists into the adult life. Usually, the amount of fetal hemoglobin reduces after six months of postnatal life, but in this case, they persist into adulthood. Sometimes this may, this may be beneficial, especially in the case of beta thalassemia major. The clinical picture may be not that severe because they have some amount of functioning hemoglobin. Right. So, first I will discuss about alpha thalassemia. So, alpha thalassemia are mainly caused by deletions. Right. There are two types of mutations that cause alpha thalassemia. We name some name, uh, we name one type as alpha plus thalassemia, where some amount of alpha globin is produced. And if, if a mutation results in uh, no production of alpha globin, we denote that as alpha zero thalassemia. So clinically, there are four entities, cyan carriers, they have three functioning genes. The alpha thalassemia trait, they have two functioning genes. Either they may be heterozygous or homozygous. And in HB, H disease, they have only three, function, uh, three deleted genes and one functioning gene. So as a result of that, the excessive beta chains precipitate within the red cell precursor cell, uh, give rise to this HBH inclusions. So uh, the fourth type is the splitter type. It's known as HB Bart's hydrops petalis. So this happens in uh, very fetal life when there's no alpha chain to uh, produce fetal hemoglobin. So as a result of that, this gamma globins forms tetramers and it leads to, it, they precipitate in red cell precursors and it leads to uh, development of uh, ineffective erythropoiesis. As a result of that, the fetus may uh, demise due to uh, hydrox fetalis due to anemia, severe anemia. So this picture shows you, you some clear picture. So cyan carriers have uh, one affected for normal. See the alpha trait. It, they may be homozygous or heterozygous. In heterozygous one, two genes are both alpha one and alpha two is affected on one chromosomes. So these are the uh, carriers that can give rise to hydrox fetalis or so the uh, HB uh, uh, alpha type uh, Bart syndrome because uh, they don't produce any alpha chains, right? But uh, the homozygous one with one uh, effect, uh, one uh, functioning gene on each chromosomes, they won't give rise to uh, hydrofetalis, uh, the severe most form of alpha thalassemia. So these are the common deletion, alpha plus deletions. You can see. Although there are some large deletions, at least one HbA or alpha gene is spared, right? And you can see the, the commonest type from Sri Lanka, the alpha 3.7 deletion, which has three similar uh, closely related variants. Here, the alpha zero deletions where both alpha one and alpha two genes are deleted. Okay, the commonest mutations affecting each regions of the uh, world. In our region, it's the commonest mutation is the 3.7 and 4.2 deletions. I will explain what are they. Right. 
so this happens in uh, cell division so we know that dna uh, material the genetic material is exchanged between uh, homologous chromosomes uh, during uh, cell division so sometimes this may result in uh, unbalanced uh, crossover of genetic material as a result of that the one chromosome may get an additional alpha gene which is a combination of alpha 1 and alpha 2 and one chromosome may get one only one combined or hybrid alpha gene that is alpha 3.7 so the one chromosome will get only one from uh, alpha gene other one get three we call it anti 3.7 same mechanism when it uh, occur the other way around the leftward crossover will result in deletion of uh, large segment and uh, in one chromosome so they have only one function in alpha gene the other one will get three functional alpha genes although these are uh, chimeric genes or as they were as a combination they are functioning so they can produce uh, functioning alpha chains so these are the two types, two commonest types of deletions in Sri Lanka. And one rare type has been described in Sri Lanka. It's you guys to alpha zero thalassemia. It's a large deletion. Right? And there are many other non-deletional mutations, but those are usually rare, but uh, they are uh, not that pres not present within our country also. So it, they may be affecting the RNA processing pro or they may be frame shift or nonsense mutations and sometimes uh, they may be affecting the RNA translation and sometimes they produce unstable alpha chains and there's one interesting type where alpha genes are normal uh, the cluster is normal but the mutation is somewhere else in the X chromosome and they, this ATRX gene which has some uh, effect over controlling alpha cluster so when there's a mutation, it results in alpha thalassemia plus mental retardation. We call it X-linked alpha thalassemia mental retardation syndrome. Right. When you go to beta thalassemia, the majority of them are point mutations. Right? We divide, we discuss three types of beta thalassemia, beta thal trait to thal minor, beta thal intermedia, and beta thal major. And there are several other types. Sometimes beta thalassemia may occur with other hemoglobinopathies like hemoglobin E, hemoglobin S, uh, hemoglobin C. Right? And there are some autosomal dominant type of beta thalassemia. Although thalassemia is considered as classical example for autosomal recessive inheritance, there are some autosomal dominant thalassemic variants. So here, this picture, you can see the commonest mutations affecting our region. So this all six mutations is present within our population. You have to remember that. So these are the three most commonest mutations in Sri Lanka, the IVS 1 to 5 D to C mutation. So this IVS stands for intervening sequence. In other words, those are the introns within uh, HBBO beta gene. We know they are in gene, they are exons and introns. So hemoglobin gene has three exons and two introns. So this mutation occur within the first intron. So its position is given here. The third type, which is considered as thalassemic hemoglobinopathy, also known as HBE, it is the third commonest mutation in Sri Lanka. Okay. Right. So I mentioned about dominant beta thal mutation. So it is caused by unstable beta chains that precipitate within erythroid precursors. Right? Not only uh, uh, thalassemic, uh, the mutation in thalassemia genes, beta, uh, globin genes, there are some other genes also affect the, the clinical cause of beta thalassemia. We consider, we know them as modifiers. Primary modifiers are actually the beta thal alleles. The secondary modifiers, that give that all to the level of alpha and uh, gamma globin levels like uh, these mutations and there are tertiary modifiers that 
affect the severity of complications. Okay, so I will go through quickly because of the uh, time limitation. So, so what are the our approach to genetic diagnosis of thalassemias? There are PCR-based techniques, Sanger sequencing, next generation sequencing, and microarray-based techniques. So PCR, specifically this JAP PCR can be used to detect alpha 3.7 and 4.2 uh, mutations in Sri Lanka. And some point mutations can also be detected using PCR-based techniques. But the best one to detect point mutation is Sanger sequencing because given in a given population, there are more than one mutation. So this will be helpful in detecting them. Next generation sequencing also very important, especially due to its high performance and relatively low cost, we can use them for uh, screening program for large populations. Right? Uh, in Sanger sequencing, uh, for the one gene, you have to do it in several segments, but in this next generation sequencing uh, platform, you can do many genes together, including the, the genetic mutations, genetic variants that affect in the uh, clinical uh, the modifiers that affect in the clinical uh, course of the disease. Right, microarray based techniques are, can also be used to uh, detect, uh, especially in the community level screening program. Right, thank you very much. Right.